All right, everybody. Hello and welcome as always. I am Sean. This is In The Mixer, episode 94. Happy Thursday, wherever in the world you happen to be watching from. And if you're watching this one in the playlist, I hope it's a great day, wherever or whatever day of the week it is, I guess. Now, if you haven't gone back and watched the rest of the episodes from this week, introducing the squad, going through our early season results, all that sort of stuff, go and check them out because they'll give you additional context on all the stuff that I'm about to go through. But we have jumped forward a little bit ahead, played about five games since yesterday's episode. We've got some results that we want to recover, so let's jump in and have a look at those now. So first and foremost, as you guys can see, we're currently sitting in ninth position. 15 games played, 7 wins, 5 draws, and 3 defeats in that space of time. There have been international call-ups. It's great that we've got a squad that have a lot of youth internationals in it at the moment. I think it's really helping their development, getting consistent games. We do have to manage workloads and condition and match upness and all that sort of stuff. And you will see a little bit of rotation today. But because of that, we have a couple of games on hand on a few sides. A couple of teams have played 17, a couple have played 16. We've only played 15. If we win those games in hand, we are likely to get ourselves up into the playoff positions. For those of you that checked out the earlier episode this week, you'll know that Stoke was running away with the division. They were undefeated after 10 games, but uh, not thankfully, but somehow the wheels have kind of come off for them a little bit. They lost 4-0 to West Brom, 2-0 to Wigan, and 2-0 to Fulham in their last three games, which sees them drop down the table. But similar to us, they do have games on hand other against the other teams around them. Uh, West Brom kind of slowly showing themselves to be the team to beat early season. We haven't played them yet this year. That will be a massive episode or a massive game that comes up in the next few weeks. As far as our results are concerned, it's been a bit up, a bit down. Of course, in that last episode, we lost 2-0 to Birmingham in the Carabao Cup, which is fine. It gets rid of that competition, allows us to focus on the league and eventually the FA Cup once it starts in January. Uh, and then we won 1-0 against Middlesbrough. A scrappy game, scrappy result, but we got a good performance. Uh, we then had a nil-all draw with Barnsley. Both sides had great opportunities to win this. We played against Toby Sheriff, who was our goalkeeper from a couple of seasons ago. And he was very, very good in this game, it must be said. Uh, we then beat Swansea 3-0 in a very, very good performance. They were towards the bottom of the division. And then we had a fantastic performance against Sheffield United where we beat them 3-1. If you watched last season, you will remember they did knock us out in the playoffs. They're a very good side. Managed by Gary Neville as well, who I have a pretty good record when he was previously managed at Wigan. And hopefully we can continue getting points against him at Sheffield this season. And then randomly, out of nowhere, Sheffield Wednesday sacked their manager. Got a new one in Gavin McCann, who I think moved across from Charlton and smacked us 3-0. It was more even than perhaps that would suggest. I think we had more clear-cut. No, no, they had only one clear-cut chance but scored three goals. That sounds weird, but whatever. We had more of the ball. We created opportunities. We did whatever else. I think I made an error of going attacking too early in the game. I think I did it at halftime. And in the second half, they kind of torched us a little bit, which is where you can see the goals coming from. But again, set pieces were just causing us a little bit of issue. So we might have to keep an eye on that as the season progresses. We do get a chance to bounce back and play Brentford and Rochdale today. Brentford down in 11th spot, Rochdale down in 21st. We are going to rotate just a little bit We're, because of those players playing international football at the moment. Uh, the likes of Goran Petrovic, Gian Benchop are struggling for fitness. I'm going to leave them out for this one with the idea that we get them fresh and ready to go for the game against Rochdale. In addition, as a new face, Connor Carden is a player that we signed during the offseason on a free transfer. I had him on the development list to go out to other teams, but given the lack of depth we've got at the moment in central midfield, I've brought him back up. He's just playing. He's not playing. He hasn't played yet, but uh, he's a backup deep line playmaker is where we're going to use him. If we eventually transition to a box-to-box -box midfielder, he can fulfill that role as well. So he comes in and another wonderful face pack by Chilled Moose, whose link is in the description below if you want to go and check out her fantastic work and her Patreon. Otherwise, the lineup is very solid. I'm struggling at the back to figure out exactly what the best defensive partnership is. Sigurdsson and Escobar are going to get the balance now because I think I like having a left-footed center back, which Sigurdsson is on that left-hand side. Um, Greisinger has been fine as far as his individual match ratings go, but Sigurdsson played when we beat Sheffield and our defensive structure and lines were very good. And then Greisinger played against Sheffield Wednesday uh, where we were pretty poor at the back, to be honest. So... I'm going to make that rotation. If the results go our way today, I think that kind of settles us having that as our preferred central defensive partnership. Even if the star ratings, values, match ratings don't necessarily go along with that. It's all about the results we get. We also have a return today for George Madrigal, the Costa Rican midfielder. Comes back into midfield after about six weeks away. He's probably only going to get through about an hour in this one. And alongside him, the Wolf is back. He is, of course, the captain of the club. Thankfully, he's dropped him being upset at the start of the season about some of the players that left. There's nothing I can do about it, but we have made a commitment to him to develop young players into the first team, which is currently ongoing. We'll see how it works out. 
As far as the transfers are concerned, we've only got one new face joining us in January at the moment. We are keeping an eye on a few different players around the world. We've got some 16-year-old prospects that we want to try and maybe poach from other youth teams and academies around the world. We've got some older players as well who are either English because we need a few more homegrown players in the squad or players that I think could jump in and do a good job for us, strengthening the lineup significantly. So something to keep an eye on. We'll continue working towards January and hopefully early next week have some reinforcements, particularly in the center of the park, which is where I think we need them most. So looking first at our lineup, Kubus in goal. Uh, Sigurdsson and Escobar will hopefully get a good run together as the central defensive partnership. Uh, good life and Dixon comes in on the right-hand side. Ben Shot will uh, drop off to the bench just to rest him, given that he has played quite a bit of football over the last few months. Uh, Wolf comes in and anchors midfield again. Madrigal makes his return from injury as the Mazzaia supporting. Aguaya has been our leading assist creator and has been in pretty good form over the last month or so at the 10 roll. Uh, Ramirez, our backup left winger, will play instead of Illich, who's currently injured and out for, I think, three or four more weeks. He's done quite well, actually, to be fair to him over the last few games. Six starting appearances during that time. Or maybe he hasn't done that well. Maybe I'm thinking about his Carabao Cup form, which was relatively good. And Dorber comes in on the right-hand side for Petrovic, who we give a little bit of a rest to as well. Probably last season for Stuart Dorber, unless he starts to really put his foot down and uh, play really good football. I just think Petrovic is better and two years younger and has a higher ceiling. Dorber's been great as a squad player, but in reality, I don't think we're going to be able to take him to a Premier League level or even to a Highland Championship level if we need him. Uh, Alta Miranda will play up front. I have switched our tactic to have, instead of the advanced forwards, which we were using the last two episodes, uh, back to pressing forwards, which is the role that I really want to get working. I think it serves this shape well. I think it serves the uh, English jam pressing structure that we're using at the moment. Looking at Brentford's lineup, they've got Thompson in goal. They've still got quite a few holdouts of uh, young players. In they've got Medibo Sanyan, uh, 31 years of age now. What nation is that? Burkina Faso International from uh, Rayo. Sociedad there, or Real San Sebastian, as they are in the current database. Looks to be very good, actually. A quite solid central defensive option. And I do love a left-footed central defender. You've got Reese Oxford as well. They're using him as a left-back, which is in his preferred position. 31 years of age now. He's had quite the career. Augsburg and came back to Stoke, where we played against him for a bit. Um, then was at Burnley in the Premier League. And now back down with Brentford in the Championship. You've got James Garner, their captain. A wonderful youth prospect that comes through the Manchester United Academy at the start of everyone's saves. Very good deep line playmaker if you can pick him up early. Still only 29 years of age. He's got a couple of years left in him. And he plays alongside another Manchester United prospect in Tahith Chong, who himself has had quite the journey. He was out at loan on MK Dons, then at United, where he only made a couple of Premier Division appearances. Was at loan at Middlesbrough for quite a few years. Then Brighton paid a bit of money for him in the Premier Division level. Then Blackburn paid a bit of money for him. And now he's dropped down to the Championship level with Brentford this season. And Tyrese John Jules, one of always in the media dream 11s as being one of the better players in the division. I don't 100% see it, if I'm being completely honest, but he is 29 now. Maybe some of these stats have dropped up, dropped off, but physically looks very strong. Mentally, he's okay. Technique has a little bit in it as well. But Brentford were a good side last year. We know we're going to have to do well to uh, get beyond them. And I'm going to assertively say I'm expecting to see a much better showing from you guys today after that 3-0 defeat, which was kind of out of nowhere. Uh, it uh, is important that we manage to bounce back in this episode. Got the first highlight of the game here. The Wolf exchanges passes with Ramirez, who's got the pace to get around a man if he can get goal side. Beats one, then beats a second, and cuts it back towards Dorber back post. And Dorber, the two backup wingers combined fantastically well. And I just said in the build up there, this might be Dorber's last opportunity to really go after first team football. And he's early doors, gotten in there with a wonderful, wonderful goal. Ramirez does the run though, like, and the, Meg's the defender on the way through, chips it back post, and Dorber on his wrong foot smashes it back across the goalkeeper, who can only get a hand on it but not prevent it from crossing the line for the first goal. One full start. Throw in here, right-hand side. Dixon, very deep, finds Aguirre. Back to Dixon again. Now Madrigal, all the way back to the Wolf at the base of midfield. We can work this out left to good life. Steady plays a reverse pass to Ramirez. Now back into the Wolf, who sends one into the corner for Ramirez to chase. He has got the pace to get there. Looks front post, but nothing doing. Chong comes forward now and plays a good ball forward for Brentford, but a good header from Escobar wins it back. Ramirez now on the left-hand side. Gets a ball back stick to Dorber again, and he could have made it a double inside the opening seven minutes, but just over the crossbar. Deep free kick here. Chong to take. Good header away from Escobar again, but Chong's going to get another bite at the apple. Back into Sanyan. Now Olazola and Thompson at the top of the box. It's a good strike, to be fair. Bradley Thompson, his first goal of the season for Brentford. And we'll check it out here in three dimensions, but it looks like a fairly decent strike. Kind, maybe maybe a little bit against the run of play. Brentford's first highlight of the match, really. 
Good little triangle that they work there. We maybe should have won that one at the top of the box. And then no one gets out to Thompson quick enough. And he picks that bottom left-hand corner. And it's a fairly good left-footed strike. I can't be too upset at Kubis in goal. Throwing left-hand side for us in the final third. Good life exchanges pass with Aguirre. And then Dorva, who's been busy in these opening highlights, just heads over the crossbar again. You do have to wonder, though, if uh, Petrovic, all 193 centimetres of him, was playing on the right-hand side. Would we have headed home some of these chances? Aguirre, back to good life. Now Alta Miranda. It's headed away. Madrigal should recover and can play it out to the right-hand side. Said he holds possession. Now he goes to Dixon on the right, who maybe could have wrapped his foot around it a little bit earlier. He did have an angle there. Instead, Madrigal tries to force a ball, and Ola Zola, Ola Zola, if I'm pronouncing that right, comes flying forward on the left-hand side. Ball across towards Tyrese John Jules. First involvement from the Brentford striker just heading over the crossbar. We are also going to demand more for the last couple of minutes here. They've immediately got a free kick in a wide area. Garner with a flick on header, but Kubis does very well to save and hold. Is that the end of the highlight, or are we going to see some sort of change here? Ball out right to Escobar. Now to Dixon. He can come forward. Dixon in the last couple of weeks got his first full Australian cap. One of the few full internationals in the side. Madrigal is another who's got the ball now. Aguirre, great ball across to Ramirez, who first time strikes it, but Thompson does quite well to save and hold with a few bodies in the box there for the rebound. And at half time, looks relatively even. We've had six shots, two on target, 65% of the ball. We've had way more possession, but they've had six shots, three on target, 35% possession. I'm tempted to go attacking in the second half, given that we are at home. Assertively, uh, we're not been doing badly. If everyone continues to work hard, we'll win this. Not enough people have responded as motivated, which is what I need, or happy. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, we're already on attacking, so why am I worrying too much about that? Maybe if we get a lead here in the second half, we'll drop back to positive and try and defend it a little bit. But we're very quickly getting towards the hour mark here. No highlights as yet in the second half. Dixon struggled a little bit. We don't have a backup right back because I've rotated Ben Champ out. Good life can come off, though, for Hernandez. Alta Miranda struggled a little bit. We'll bring Kamara back on, see if he can find the back of the net and what would be a match winner. And then we have to take Madrigal off just because he's not 100% fit making his way back from injury. I'm going to trust Sir Gerdeson. I'm going to trust the Wolf to uh, reel their heads in a little bit and stay out there despite being on yellow cards. Passionately, I have faith in you. Get out there and make a difference. And we're also going to use Old Faithful after an hour, a get creative shout, and everyone seems inspired. But what we need is highlights, and what we need is a goal. Well, we've got a highlight here, deep on the left-hand side. Hernandez, first involvement from him, throwing from the right-hand side. Now ball into Aguirre. Ball across to Camaro, who's hit the crossbar, and they've scrambled it away. Hernandez can keep it in, but the highlight comes to an end. Can use our demand more shout into the last 10 minutes now. As things currently stand, we would drop down to ninth in the division. And Brentford, I think, fall as well. Three points, to, three minutes to be added on, sorry. And we're through that time now. It's a disappointing one all draw. Nine shots, three on target, 64% possession. Uh, Brentford, eight shots, four on target, 36% of the ball. Relatively even stats lines from chances created and shots taken, but felt like we had more of the highlights, even if they were half chances. Assertively, unlucky boys, it just wasn't our day. Let's go with that. And... Brentford were definitely the bigger challenge of the two sides in this episode. We should be able to go after it a little bit against Rochdale, given they are towards the bottom of the division, and hopefully get three points. We're still in a scenario where we haven't had six points in an episode so far in Season 3 in the Championship. I would desperately like to get that. And I think what we will do is we're going to drop Petrovic back in for Dorba, who did score, but I think probably could have done a little bit more. And then maybe Ben Shop in for Dixon. And let's also add in here, insert a column... Here for their last five games, who is really struggling for a little bit of form? Camara hasn't played particularly well. Good Life hasn't played particularly well. Let's uh, rotate him out and drop in Hernandez, who also hasn't played well, but he's only had sub appearances. And the other one is Ramirez. Illich isn't quite back yet. Madrigal isn't quite there either. So we'll just try and get a side out there that's got decent form. Hopefully that defensive change at the back there will uh, give us a little bit more stability, but we'll just see how it goes. He hasn't exactly set the world on fire with a 6.5 average rating, uh, but I think a lot of that would be appearances off the bench. We've only got four days till the game against Rochdale. Let's just also go and give an additional rest day here. We played a shitload of football in the first three months of the season. You guys can see here, just Saturday, Wednesday games pretty much every week, and November is looking very similar. So I want to try and manage as much of the first 11's uh, playing and training load as possible. But magic of editing, let's jump forward to the game against Rochdale and look at the lineups now. So just a couple of changes that you've already kind of seen. We're going to bring in Hernandez at left wing back. We'll give Sigurdsson another opportunity and see if that central defensive partnership is perhaps our best one. Magic Gale continues to work his way back from a uh, fit injury on that 
right hand side of our midfield base. He'll play as a Messiah. And Ramirez, really the only other backup option. Petrovic comes back in, Venship comes back in. Our right hand side improves dramatically. And I'm hopeful that uh, we can get a good result and a good performance in this one. Looking at the Rochdale squad, there's a few familiar faces, a couple of guys that we have uh, looked at quite a few. Anderson here, Buchanan, Perrington we've played against 15 times. Dennis Tufan, I think, was previously at Hull and was a massive pain in the ass when he was there. He was indeed. He's been at Rochdale now a few seasons. Looks to be a good player. Perrington, interestingly, I think he's naturally a left-back. They're using him as a defensive midfielder, and he's also their equal leading scorer for the season, but they are struggling. Crittenden, their leading assist maker, Looks to be a solid right-back option, 21-year-old English player coming through the Rochdale Academy. They actually do quite well with uh, players coming through Rochdale's Academy. They consistently have players in that first team that came through. On the left, their captain, 25-year-old Irish player Paul Welsh. Looks solid, but not spectacular. They don't have the strongest lineup here. And then May, their other leading scorer for the season. Another Irish youth international. Looks solid, but again, not spectacular. I think we should be beating Rochdale pretty comfortably here. Passionately, we're going to say... Let's give the fans a performance they're expecting here. And let's also tell Alta Miranda up front that we need a little bit more from him. He was actually, last episode, I think I was talking about Alta Miranda and Camera and how to best play them. He's actually been okay the last month or so, uh, getting a couple of goals that were very needed. Played very well in that game against Sheffield United as well. But uh, I think once we start recording, he just seems to go into his shell a little bit. First highlight of the game, 28 minutes gone. Thrown on the right-hand side. Aguirre plays it to Petrovic. Now to the Wolf. We can switch it out to the left to Ramirez, who can, has the pace to get around a fullback. Does so now. Cuts it back stick towards Petrovic. It's cleared away. Aguirre brings it down. Ramirez back to Aguirre again. And it's the third goal of the season for our little Spanish playmaker, Javier Aguirre. One for one to left effort from him. He's been good as well. He doesn't pr probably contribute with as many assists or highlights as far as you guys would see. But um, his passing stats are excellent. His uh, work rate is excellent as well. And he just seems to always bring players into play at the right times. But a wonderful finish from him there for his third goal of the year. Big shoes to fill, following on from Samuela Benizzi, who moved to Man United last year. But uh, he's doing pretty well so far. We've got 10 minutes remaining in the half. I'm going to use demand more. If we can get another goal before half time, I think it sets us up nicely with a good platform for the second half. But two minutes to be added on. We're through that now, and the referee's called half time. So at half time, four shots, two on target, 55% possession. They've had four, two, and 45. I don't think we're necessarily playing that well. I'm calmly going to say. Please, with how things are going, keep it up. But we might transition back to our positive mentality. Drop off a little bit. Maybe invite a bit more pressure. Get Rochdale out of their own 18-yard box a little bit. You can imagine, if we go to attacking, they're just going to stand on their 18-yard box as a poor side. If we potentially drop off a little bit deeper, it might bring them forward and there'll be more space in behind. That's, that's how it's working in my head up here. So, but we'll see how we go. As always, we'll wait for the hour mark before we make any subs, and we are rocketing towards that particular time. They're coming back into it statistically, but we still haven't seen any highlights from them. Let's make these couple of subs. Madrigal needs to come off because he's still working his way back to fitness. Hendy will come on for him. Altamiranda has struggled despite me bigging him up just before the game. And then what other ones are we going to do? We might hold on to that last sub just for the last few minutes. Let's passionately say, I have faith in you. Get out there and make a difference, and we'll confirm that. And let's also use a Get Creative shout. Highlight in possession for Rochdale. Petrovic recovers the ball from the goal kick, and then Anderson has gone through the back of him. If he picks up a second yellow, he has indeed. We're going to go attacking here. Let's really put the foot down. We're playing against 10 men now. Into the last 10 minutes, we haven't seen any further highlights in this one, so we're going to use our demand more shout. Corner routine here. Petrovic to take. It's headed away. Now Welsh at the top of the box. Looks out to Parrington, who I think's moved back to left back. Someone's got to go to him. It's the first highlight we've seen from Rochdale. If they score, I'll be furious. Ball back into midfield. Firth. Little reverse pass to Swan. Ball out right to Flynn, the overlapping fullback. Front post, Sigurdsson with a good header. I say Sigurdsson every time. It's Sigurdsson. I've got to get myself in the habit. Good ball forward to Ramirez on the left wing here, but he has lost out to Taylor. Looks to send a ball over the top. Sigurdsson, I got it right that time with a good header again. Let's switch this out to the right-hand side, boys. Handy, finds Ramirez. We've got backstick runners if we can get the ball in the box. Said he cuts it himself and goes for the drive. It wasn't quite on, but if he had, maybe had it gone around the outside of the uh, winger there, or fullback, and then banged it across the six-yard box. We might have been in good shape. Four minutes to be added on here. I think this one's going to peter out, and it's not the most exciting game we've ever had. That's a couple of episodes in a row where we've had one-nil wins. Uh, nine shots, two on target, 57% of the ball, 12-3 and 43% for Rochdale, who somehow came flying back in in the second half. I'm guessing that's because of the tactical change. I'm going to calmly say, a good win, boys. Well done. I'm not going to get down on anyone. I want to try and keep this morale as high as possible uh, heading into a really busy portion of the season, both November and December, usually quite a few games. It does see us go eighth in the table, still with a couple of games on hand on Bristol, who are above us, 
Stoke are still dropping off. They've now lost five games all in the last like six or seven weeks. West Brom still the side to beat, though they did draw with Barnsley 1-1. Thankfully, not getting too much further ahead of us. If we win our game in hand, we'll be nine points off top spot, which is not great, but a good run of form, a good result against West Brom, and we're right back in it. Aguirre gets the Man of the Match award for his goal, which is fantastic. Petrovic and Benshop are both looking like they could use a rest. I might give them a rest from the next game. They are both playing international football, and I think that's starting to take a toll on them. And let's give Aguirre some praise. Superb in front of goal last time. And he, quite rightly, is very happy with that. Now, looking forward to the schedule, I'm already starting to think about next week and what it's going to look like. So I think we did one earlier this week to try and catch up the game from the playoffs last season. I want to finish the season with episode 100 being like the end of the year. And if that includes playoffs, I want it to kind of incorporate the playoffs as well, which of course is getting towards the end of next week. I'm just talking through my planning process, my rationale for this, but I think we're going to jump forward again. I think we're going to go all the way through to December and play the games against Portsmouth, who are in 23rd, and Reading, who are in 4th. It would mean we're probably going to play 10 games off screen. So we'll be around 28 games played for the season. It'll hopefully give us a better picture of how we're traveling and maybe a good opportunity for us to actually catch up some points on the sides that are ahead of us. We do have our catch-up games throughout November as well. And given it this the 21st of December 2030 in-game, we might make it a Christmas special as well and pull out the old green screen nightmare for tomorrow's episode. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. The continued support on this series and the channel has been absolutely fantastic. If you're enjoying the series, if you have feedback, anything like that, drop it in the comment section below. I do respond to every single comment that I get as quickly as I see it. Sometimes with time difference, that is a few hours later, but that's the way things work. You can drop a like on this video if you want to please that YouTube algorithm, get more people in the community, more people watching the series, more people in the comment section below. You can also subscribe if you want to be kept up to date on all our future videos as they continue to release over the next few days, weeks, months, whatever else. I'm very much enjoying FM20 content and content creation at the moment. I hope you guys are as well. If you check out those links on that side, you'll see our Twitter, our Twitch page, all that sort of great stuff if you want to get further involved with the community. But like I said at the start, more than anything, I just appreciate you watching. I've been Sean, and I'll see you all again in the mixer.